Introduction to A Lover's Diary by Gilbert Parker. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This introduction read for you by Michelle Fry, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. A Lover's Diary has not the same modest history as Ember's. As far back as 1894, it was given to the public without any apology or excuse, but I have been apologizing for it ever since, in one way, without avail. I wished that at least one-fifth of it had not been published, but my apology was never heard till now, as I withdraw from this edition of A Lover's Diary some twenty-five sonnets, representing fully one-fifth of the original edition. As it now stands, the faint thread of narrative is more distinct, and redundancy of sentiment and words is modified to some extent at any rate. Such material story as there is, apart from the spiritual history embodied in the sonnets, seems more visible now, and the reader has a clearer revelation of a young, aspiring, candid mind shadowed by stern conventions of thought, dogma, and formula, but breaking loose from the environment which smothered it. The price it pays for the revelation is a hopeless love, informed by temptation, but lifted away from ruinous elements by self-renunciation, to end with the inevitable parting, poignant and permanent, a task of the soul finished, and the toll of the journey of understanding paid. The six sonnets in italics, beginning with The Bride and ending with Annunciation, have nothing to do with the story further than to show two phases of the youth's mind before it was shaken by speculation, plunged into the sadness of doubt and apprehension, and before it had found the love which was to reveal it to itself, transform the character, and give new impulse and direction to personal force and individual sense. These were written when I was twenty and twenty-one years of age, and the sonnet sequence of A Lover's Diary was begun when I was twenty-three. They were continued over seven years in varying quantity. Sometimes two or three were written in a week, and then no more would be written for several weeks or maybe months, and it is clearly to be seen from the text, from the change in style, and above all in the nature of the thought that between the darkened way which ends one epoch and reunited which begins another and the last epoch were intervening years the sonnet which begins the book and particularly that which ends the book have been very widely quoted and envoy has been set to music by more than one celebrated musician Whatever the monotony of a sonnet sequence, and it is a form which I should not have chosen if I had been older and wiser, there has been a continuous, if limited, demand for the little book. As Edmund Clarence Stedman said in a review, it was a book which had to be written. It was an impulse, a vision, and a revealing. And in his own words in a letter to me, quote, it was to be done whether you willed it or no, and there it is, a truthful thing of which you shall be glad, in spite of what you say. End quote. These last words of the great critic were in response to the sudden repentance and despair I felt after Mr. Stone and Kimball had published the book in exquisite form with a beautiful frontispiece by Will H. Lowe. In any case, it is now too late to try and disabuse the minds of those who care for the little piece of artistry, and since 1894, when it was published, I have matured sufficiently in life's academy not to be too unduly sensitive, either as to the merit or demerit of my work. There is, after all, an unlovable kind of vanity in acute self-criticism, as though it mattered deeply to the world whether one ever wrote anything or having written, as though it mattered to the world enough to stir it in its course by one vibration. The world has drunk deep of wonderful literature, and all that I can do is make a small brew with a little flavor of my own, but it still could get on very well indeed with the old staple and matured vintages were I never to write at all. THE KING'S DAUGHTER THE KING Whence art thou, sir? Gilferon, my lord, I know not well. Indeed, I am a townsman of the world. 
for once my mother told me that she saw the angel of the crossroads lead me out and point to every corner of the sky and say thy feet shall follow in the trail of every tribe and thou shalt pitch thy tent wherever thou shalt see a human face which hath thereon the alphabet of life yea thou shalt spell it out even as a child and therein wisdom find the king art thou wise gilferon only according to the signs the king what signs gilferon the first the language of the garden sire when man spoke with the naked searching thought unlacquered of the world the king speak so forthwith come show us to be wise gilferon the angel of the crossroads to me said and wisdom comes by looking eye to eye each seeing his own soul as in a glass for ye shall find the lodges of the wise the farthest camp of the delightful fires by marching two by two not one by one this ends the author's introduction one the vision from a Lover's Diary by Gilbert Parker, read for LibriVox.org by Michelle Fry, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. The Vision As one would stand who saw a sudden light flood down the world, and so encompass him, and in that world illumined seraphim brooded above and gladdened to his sight, so stand i in the flame of one great thought that broadens to my soul from where she waits who yesterday drew wide the inner gates of all my being to the hopes i sought her words come to me like a summer song blown from the throat of some sweet nightingale i stand within her light the whole day long and think upon her till the white stars fail i lift my head towards all that makes life wise and see no farther than my lady's eyes end of poem this recording is in the public domain two above the den from a lover's diary by gilbert parker read for librivox dot org by william jones Benita Springs, Florida. Number two, above the den, silence sits often on me as I touch her presence. I am like a bird that hears a note diviner than it knows and fears to share the larger harmony too much. My soul leaps up as to a sudden sound, a long lost traveler, when by her grace I learn of her life's sweetness face to face, and sweep the chords of sympathies profound. Her regal nature calmly holds its height above life's den, while moving in its maze. Unworthy thoughts would die within her sight, and mean deeds creep to darkness from her gaze. Yet only in my dreams can I set down the word that gives her nobleness a crown. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Three. Love's Courage from a Lover's Diary by Gilbert Parker. Read for LibriVox.org by Michelle Fry, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Love's Courage. Courage have I to face all bitter things that start out darkly from the rugged path leading to life's achievement. Not God's wrath would sit so heavy when my lady sings. I did not know what life meant till I felt her hand clasp mine in compact to the end. Till her dear voice said, See, I am your friend. And at her feet, amazed, my spirit knelt and yet i spoke but hoarsely then my thought i groped amid a thousand forces there her understanding all my meaning caught it was illumined in her atmosphere she read it line by line and then there fell the curtain on the shrine and it is well end of poem this recording is in the public domain
four love's language from a lover's diary by gilbert parker read for LibriVox .org by michelle fry baton rouge louisiana love's language just now a wave of perfume floated up to greet my senses as i broke the seal of her short letter and i still can feel it stir me as a saint the holy cup the missive lies there but a few plain words a thought about a song a note of praise and social duties such as fill the days of women then a thing that undergirds the phrases like a psalm a line that reads i wish that you were coming why it lies upon my heart like blossoms on the skies like breath of balm upon the clover meads the perfumed words soothe me into a dream my thoughts float to her on the scented stream end of poem this recording is in the public domain five aspiration from a lover's diary by gilbert parker read for LibriVox .org by michelle fry baton rouge louisiana aspiration none ever climbed to mountain heights of song but felt the touch of some good woman's palm none ever reached god's altitude of calm but heard one voice cry follow from the throng i would not place her as an image high above my reach cold in some dim recess whenever she should feel a warm caress of this my hand that serves her till i die i would not set her higher than my heart though she is nobler than i e'er can be because she placed me from the crowd apart and with her tenderness she honored me because of this i hold me worthier to be her kinsman while i worship her end of poem this recording is in the public domain six the meeting from a lover's diary by gilbert parker read for librivox .org by michelle fry baton rouge louisiana the meeting o oh, marvel of our nature that one life strikes through a thousand lives that folded round to find another even as a sound sweeps to a song through elemental strife through cycles infinite the forces wait which destiny has set for union here no circumstance can warp them from their sphere they meet some time and this is god and fate and god is law and fate is law in use and we are acted on by some deep cause which sanctifies i will and i refuse when love speaks love the peaceful end of laws and i from many conflicts overpast find here love law and god at last end of poem this recording is in the public domain seven the nest from a lover's diary by gilbert parker read for librivox .org by michelle fry baton rouge louisiana the nest high as the eagle builds his lonely nest above the sea above the paths of man and makes the elements his barbican that none may break the mother eagle's rest so build i far above all human eyes my nest of love heaven's face alone bends down to give it sunlight starlight while is blown a wind upon it out of paradise none shall affright no harm may come to her whom i have set there in that lofty home love's eye is sleepless i could feel the stir even of god's cohorts if they chance to come i am her shield i would that i might prove how dear i hold the lady of my love egyptian proverb when thou makest a voyage to the stars go thou blindfolded and carry not a sword but the sandals of thy youth 
egyptian proverb seek thou the angel of the crossroads ere thou goest upon a journey and she will give thee wisdom at the four corners pisgah behold now i have touched the highest point in my existence when i turn my eyes backward to scan my outlived agonies i feel god's finger touch me to anoint with this sweet present the ungenerous past with love the wounds that struck stark in my soul with hope life's aching restlessness and dole to show me place to anchor in at last like to a mother bending o'er the bed where sleeps death silent one that left her side ere he had reached the flow of manhood's tide so stood i by my life whence life had fled but life came back at love's clear trumpet call and at love's feet i cast the useless pall end of poem this recording is in the public domain Eight, Love is Enough, from A Lover's Diary by Gilbert Parker, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. It is enough that in this burdened time the soul sees all its purposes aright. The rest, what does it matter? Soon the night will come to whelm us, then the morning chime. What does it matter if but in the way one hand clasps ours, one heart believes us true. One understands the work we try to do, and strives through love to teach us what to say. Between me and the chilly outer air which blows in from the world, there standeth one who draws love's curtains closely everywhere. As God folds down the banners of the sun, warm is my place about me, and above where was the raven, I behold the dove. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Nine, at the play, from a lover's diary by Gilbert Parker, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. I felt her fan my shoulder touch tonight, soft act, faint touch, no meaning did it bear to any save myself who felt the air of a new feeling cross my soul's clear sight. To me what matter that the players played? They grew upon the instant like the toys which danced before the sight of idle boys. I could not hear the laughter that they made. Swept was I on that breath her hand had drawn, through the dull air into a mountain space where shafts of the bright sun-god interlace, making the promise of a golden dawn, and straightway crying, Oh, my heart, rejoice! It found its music in my lady's voice. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. So Calm the World From a Lover's Diary by Gilbert Parker Read for LibriVox.org by Phil Chenever far up the sky the sunset glamour spreads far off the city lies in golden mist the sea grows calm the waves the sun has kissed strike white hands softly against the rocky heads so calm the world so still the city lies so warm the haze that spreads o'er everything and yet where there peace sits as lord and king Havoc will reign when next the sun shall rise. The wheels pause only for a little space, And in the pause they gather strength again. Tis but the veil drawn over labor's face, O'er strife, derision, and the sin of men. My heart, with a sweet inner joy, o'erflows To nature's peace, and a kind silence knows. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Eleven. The Welcome. From a Lover's Diary by Gilbert Parker. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. But see, my lady comes. I hear her feet upon the sward. She standeth by my side. 
just such a face raphael had deified if in his day they too had chanced to meet and i tossed by the tide of circumstance lifting weak hands against a host of swords paused suddenly to hear her gentle words making powerless the lightnings of mischance i who was but a maker of poor songs that one might sing behind his prison bars i who it seemed fate singled out for wrongs she smiled on me as smile the nearest stars from her deep soul i draw my peace and thus one wreath of rhyme i weave for both of us in the poem this recording is in the public domain twelve the shrine from my lover's diary by gilbert parker read for librivox dot org by william jones the shrine were i but as the master souls who move in their high place immortal on the earth my song might be a thing to crown her worth tis but a pathway for the feet of love but since she walks where i am fain to sing since she has said i listen o my friend there is a glory lent the song i send and i am proud yes prouder than a king i grow to nobler use beneath her eyes eyes that smile on me so serenely will they smile a welcome though my best hope dies and greet me at the summit of the hill will she for whom my heart has built a shrine take from me all that makes this world divine end of poem this recording is in the public domain thirteen the torch from a lover's diary by gilbert parker read for librivox dot org by william jones the torch art's use what is it but to touch the springs of nature but to hold a torch up for humanity in life's large corridor to guide the feet of peasants and of kings what is it but to carry union through thoughts alien to thoughts kindred and to merge the lines of color that should not diverge and give the sun a window to shine through what is it but to make the world have heed for what its dull eyes else would hardly scan to draw in a stark light a shameless deed and show the fashion of a kingly man to cherish honour and to smite all shame to lend hearts voices and to give thoughts a name end of poem this recording is in the public domain fourteen in armour from a lover's diary by gilbert parker read for librivox dot org by william jones in armor but wherein shall art work shall beauty lead it captive and set kisses on its mouth shall it be strained unto the breast of youth and in a garden live where grows no weed shall it in dalliance with the flaunting world play but soft airs sing but sweet-tempered songs veer lightly from the stress of all great wrongs and lisp of peace mid battle-flags unfurled shall it but pluck the sleeve of wantonness and gently chide the folly of our time but wave its golden wand at sin's duress and say ah me ah me to fallow crime nay art serves truth and truth with titan blows strikes fearless at all evil that it knows end of poem this recording is in the public domain fifteen in thee my art from a lover's diary by gilbert parker read for librivox dot org by william jones bonita springs florida in thee my art in thee is all my art from thee i draw the substance of my dreams the waking plan of practised thought 
I can no measure scan, but thou workst in me like eternal law. If I were rich in worldly title deeds of broad estate won from posterity, if from decaying time I snatched a sea richer than prelates pray for with their beads, if some should bring before me frankincense and make a pleasant fire to greet mine eyes, if there were given me for recompense gifts fairer than a seraph could devise, I would, my sovereign, kneel to thee and say, It is all thine, thou showedst me the way. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Sixteen. Denial. From a Lover's Diary by Gilbert Parker. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. But is it so that I must never kiss thee on the brow, or smooth thy silken hair, never close down thy eyelids with love's prayer? or fold my arms about my new-found bliss must i unto the courses of my age worship afar lest haply i profane the temple that is now my holy fane for which my song is given as a gauge shall i who cry to all come not within the bounds where i my lady have enshrined i am her cavalier shall i not win one dear caress the rich exchequer find of thy soft cheek if thou command my lips shall find surcease but at thy finger tips end of poem this recording is in the public domain seventeen testament from a lover's diary by gilbert parker read for librivox dot org by larry wilson why do i love thee shall my answer run because that thou hast beauty noble place because of some sweet glamour in thy face and eyes that shame the clear light of the sun shall i exclaim upon thy snow-white hands challenge the world to show a gentler mien call down the seraphs to attest the sheen upon thy brow as borrowed from their lands shall i trace out a map of all thy worth parcel thy virtues say for this and this i learned to love her here new charms had birth i in this territory caught a bliss shall i make inventory of thy grace and crowd the total into common space end of poem this recording is in the public domain eighteen Captivity from a Lover's Diary by Gilbert Parker, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Nay, lady, though I love thee, I make pause before thy question, and know not to say. Art cannot teach me to define the way. Love led me, nor e'en registers love's cause. It can but blazon in this verse of mine what love does for me, what from love it gains. What is its quickening? But it refrains from divination where thy merits shine. Canst thou indeed not tell what wrought in thee to bring me as a captive to thy feet? Canst thou not say, Twas this that made decree of conquest? Here thy soul with mine did meet. Or is it that both stand amazed before the shrine where thou hast blessed and I adore? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. 19. O Mystic Wings From A Lover's Diary by Gilbert Parker Read for LibriVox.org by William Jones O Mystic Wings O Mystic Wings, upbear me lightly now Beyond life's faithful labor To a seat where I can feel the end of things complete where no hot breath of ill can scorch the brow. O mystic wings of art, about thee truth makes atmosphere of purity and power. Tis man's breath that kills the spring's soft-petaled flower. 
ye give a refuge for the heart of youth ye give a value for all loss in age when feebled eyes search for forgotten springs ye fan the breeze that turns the moulded page and carry back the soul to ardent things poor payment can i give but here engage i thee to be love's airy equipage end of poem this recording is in the public domain Was It Thy Face? From A Lover's Diary by Gilbert Parker Read for LibriVox.org by Phil Chenevere Was it thy face I saw when, as a child, Night after night I watched one quiet star Shine tween my curtain and the window bar Until I slept and made my sleep more mild? Was it thy influence outreaching then to me or untrod years or varying days to give me courage as from phase to phase of youth's desires i passed to deeds of men was it because the star was hid a while that i in blindness wandered from my path that i wooed folly with her mumming smile and sought for lethe in a cup of wrath another hand touched mine with sadness there and saved me till I saw thy face appear. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Twenty one. A Woman's Hand. From a Lover's Diary by Gilbert Parker. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. A Woman's Hand. Lo, I am thankful now that with its touch I have walked all my days, rising from fateful and forbidden ways to find a woman's hand upon my brow, soft as a pad of rose leaves, and as pure as upraised palms of angels seen in dreams, and soothed by it to stand as it beseems a man who strives to conquer and endure. A woman's hand. There is no better thing of all things human it is half divine. It hath been more to this lame life of mine, when faith was weakness and despair was king. Man more than all men, thou wast glad to bless a woman's sacrifice and tenderness. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Twenty two. One Face I See From A Lover's Diary by Gilbert Parker Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson One face I see by thine Whene'er I hold converse with things that are Or things that were Whene'er I seek life's hidden folds to stir And watch the inner to the outer rolled Dost thou not know her, O beloved one? Hast thou not felt her sunshine on thy face? In me hast thou not learned some signs to trace Of that dear soul who calleth me her son? Such as I was that in thy countenance found favor. From her it was gathered most to my mad youth Her gentle surveillance. Was like a watchfire on a rock-bound coast. She drew about me motherhood, And thou hast with love's holy chrism touched my brow. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Twenty three. Mother. From a Lover's Diary by Gilbert Parker. Read for LibriVox.org by William Jones. Mother. She gave me courage when I weakly said, Oh, see how drifting derelict am I. The tide runs counter, and the wind is high, I see no channel through the rocks ahead. My arm is impotent, what worth to trim the bending sails? Look, I shall quaff a cup to fate, while the wild ocean swallows up the shipwrecked youth, the man who lives in him. She said, But thou hast valor, dear, 
too much for such as this thou hast grave embassy given with thy birth which thou thine honour smutch with coward failing dear son breast the sea firm purposed from that hour through wind and wave i brought my message till thou shelter gave end of poem this recording is in the public domain twenty four when first i saw thee from a lover's diary by gilbert parker read for librivox dot org by larry wilson when first i saw thee lady straightway came the thought that somehow somewhere destiny through blinding paths of happiness or blame would bend my way of life my soul to thee but then i put it from me was not i a wanderer to-morrow i should be in other lands beside another sea nay you were but a star gleam in my sky and so i came not in your sight a while you gave no thought and i passed not away but like some traveller in a deep defile i walked in darkness even through the day until at last the hands of circumstance pointed the hour that waked me from my trance end of poem this recording is in the public domain number twenty five the fates laugh from a lover's diary by gilbert parker read for librivox dot org by william jones bonita springs florida number twenty five the fates laugh i did not will this thing i set my face towards duty and my art i was alone how knew i thou shouldst roll away the stone from hopes long buried by thy tender grace what does it matter that we make resolve the fates laugh at us as they sit and spin we cannot tell what good is or what sin or why old faiths in mist of pain dissolve we only can stand watchful in the way waiting with patient hands on shield and sword ready to meet disaster in the fray till time has struck the letters of one word word of such high-born worth triumphant love give me thy canopy where'er i rove end of poem this recording is in the public domain twenty six as one who waiteth from a lover's diary by gilbert parker read for librivox dot org by larry wilson as one who waiteth as one who waiteth for the signet ring of his dear sovereign that his embassy may have clear passport over land and sea and make the subject sacred as his king as waits the warrior for a pontiff's palm upraised in blessing o'er his high emprise and bows his mailed forehead prayerful wise sinking his turbulency in deep calm so i waited for one seal to be set upon my full commission for a sign that should make impotent man's i forget and make god's i remember more divine which should command at need the homage of the armed squadrons of all loyal love end of poem this recording is in the public domain twenty seven the ceiling from a lover's diary by gilbert parker read for librivox dot org by larry wilson the ceiling but yestermorn my marshalled hopes were held upon the verge of august pilgrimage to-day i am as birds that leave the cage to seek green fastness they knew of eld to-day i am as one who hides his face within his golden beaver and whose hand clenches with pride his tried and conquering brand i as a hunter mounted for the chase for see upon my lips i carry now a touch that speaks revelry to my soul i have a dispensation large enow to enfold the world and circumscribe each pole slow let me speak it 
From her lips and brow I took the gifts she only could endow. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Twenty eight. The Pledge. From a Lover's Diary by Gilbert Parker. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. The Pledge. O gifts divine as any ever knew, the noble spirits of an antique time, as any poets fashion in their rhyme or angels whisper down the shadeless blue the priceless gifts of holy confidence that speak through quivering lips from heart to heart and unto life new energies impart and open up the gates of prescience o oh, dear my love i unto thee have given pledge that i am thy vassal evermore i stand within the zenith of my heaven on either hand a starred eternal shore I have come nearer to thy greater worth, for thou hast raised me from the common earth. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Twenty nine. Love's Tributaries from a Lover's Diary by Gilbert Parker. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Love's Tributaries. I can say now, there was the confluence of all love's tributaries, there the sea of love spread out towards eternity, and there my courser touched her finer sense. Poor though I am in my own sight, I know that thou hast winnowed, sweet, what best I am. Upon my restlessness thy ample calm hath fallen, as on frost-bound earth and snow it hideth the harsh furrows that the wheels of heavy trials made in life's champagne upon its pure unfolding sunshine steals and there is promise of the spring again here make i proclamation of my faith and poise my fealty o'er the head of death end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Choice From a Lover's Diary by Gilbert Parker Read for LibriVox.org by Simona Rosu The Choice If death should come to me tonight and say, I weigh thy destiny, behold, I give one little day with this thy love to live, then my embrace, or leave her for always, and thou shalt walk a full array of years upon thee shall the world's large honours fall and praises clamorous shall make for all thy strivings rich amends if in my ears thou saidst i love thee i would straightway cry a thousand years upon this barren earth is death without her for that day I die, and count my life for it of poorest worth. Love's reckoning is too noble to be told by time's slow fingers on its sands of gold. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Recognition from a Lover's Diary by Gilbert Parker Read for LibriVox.org by Simona Russo Recognition As in a foreign land one threads his way, mid alien scenes, knowing no face he meets, and hearing his name spoken, turns and greets with wandering joy a friend of other days. As in the pause that comes between the sound and recognition, all the finer sense is swathed in a melodious eloquence which makes his name seem in its sweetness drowned, so stood I by an atmosphere beguiled of glad surprise, when first I lips let fall the name I lightly carried when a child, that I shall rise to at the judgment call. The music of thy nature folded round its barrenness a majesty of sound. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Way of Dreams From A Lover's Diary by Gilbert Parker Read for LibriVox.org by Simona Russo 
the way of dreams since i rose out of child oblivion i have walked in a world of many dreams and noble souls beside the shining streams of fancy have with beckonings led me on their faces oft mayhap i could not see only their waving hands and noble forms sometimes there sprang between quick gathered storms but always they came back again to me women with smiling eyes and star-spun hair spake gentle things bade me look back to view the deeds of the great souls who climbed the stair immortal and for whom god's manna grew dante anacreon euripides and all who set rich wine upon the lees end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Accolade from a Lover's Diary by Gilbert Parker Read for LibriVox.org by Simona Russo The Accolade Men of brave stature came and placed their hands upon my head, and, lifting shining swords, drew through the air signs mightier than words, and vanished in the sun upon the sands. Glimpses I caught of faces that have come through crowding ages, whisperings of songs and prayers for the redress of human wrongs from voices that upon the earth are dumb they were but shadows but they lent me joy they gave me reverence for all who pace the world with hands raised evil to destroy who live but for the honour of their race they taught me to strike at no idol raised worship the space then left to be dispraised End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Fallen Idols from a Lover's Diary by Gilbert Parker Read for LibriVox.org by Simona Russo Fallen Idols Steadfastness, shall we find it then at all? Is it that as the winds blow north and south, so must be praises from the loud world's mouth? which on its heroes in their glory fall? Because the voice grows stiller, or the arm no longer can beat evils back, because the shoulders sink beneath new rising calls, and the fine thought has lost its moving charm. Because of these shall puny sages shake their heads, and haste to mock the failing one, who in his strength could make the nations quake. Prophet like Daniel, king like Solomon, in this full time we have seen mockers run about the throne of such as Tennyson. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Tennyson from a Lover's Diary by Gilbert Parker Read for LibriVox.org by Simona Russo Tennyson Who saith thy hand is weak, King Tennyson? Who crieth, see the monarch is grown old, his sceptre falls? O oh, carpers rude and bold, you who have fed upon the gracious benison, scattered unstinted by him, do you now dispraise the sweet strung harp, grown tremulous neath fingers overworn for all of us? You cannot tear the lawyers from his brow. He lives above your idle vaunts and fears, enthroned where all master souls stand up in their high place and fill the golden cup, God blessed for kings, with wine of endless ears, and greet him one with them. O brotherhood of envious dullards, ye are wroth with good. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Dreams from a Lover's Diary by Gilbert Parker Read for LibriVox.org by Simona Russo Dreams And so life passed. I lived from year to year with shadows, the strong warders of desire. I learned through them to seek the golden fire that hides itself in song's bright hemisphere. Through them I grew full of imaginings. I made strange pictures, conjured images from my deep longings, wrote the passages of life inwrought with half-glad wanderings. 
for who can now a majesty of peace that wanders ever waiting for a voice to say to him behold at last surcease of thy unrest has come therefore rejoice here set i down some dreams that come again almost forgotten in my higher gain end of poem this recording is in the public domain thirty seven the bride from a lover's diary by gilbert parker read for librivox dot org by larry wilson a ship at sea a port to anchor in not far a starry light upon the shore the sheeted lightning like a golden door swings to and fro to let earth angels in most bravely as she sailed o'er every sea withstood the storm rack spurned the sullen reef cherished her strength and held her guerdon thief to him who saith my ship comes back to me behold i sent her forth a stately thing to be my messenger to farthest lands to fortunate isles and where the silver sands girdle a summer sea that she might bring my bride who wist not that i loved her so this is no bitter day for me i trow end of poem this recording is in the public domain thirty eight the wraith from a lover's diary by gilbert parker read for librivox dot org by larry wilson a ship in port well crossed the harbour bar the hawser swung the grinding helm at rest hands clasping hands and eyes with eager zest seeking the loved returning from afar and he the master holding little wreck of all save but the idol of his soul seeks not his loving ardour to control mark how he proudly treads the whitened deck my bride my bride my lone soul's best beloved come forth come forth where art thou isabel pallid and wan lord hath it thus befell this is but dust where has the spirit roved o death-cold bride for this then have i strove o phantom ship o loveless wraith of love end of poem this recording is in the public domain thirty nine surrender from a lover's diary by gilbert parker read for libivox dot org by elizabeth parsons surrender a day of sunshine in a land of snow in a soft curtain room where ruddy flakes of fame fall free in liquid light that slakes the soft desire of one cold pale face lo close press sweet lips and eyes of violet that are filled up as with a sudden fear a storm's prelude upon the expectant mirror yet deep behind what never they forget whoever see in life's chance or mischance and he who saw what could he do but say fold up the tents the camp is struck away vain victor who rides not in rest his lance beside the hearthstone where the flame flakes fell there lay the cold keys of the citadel and a poem this recording is in the public domain forty the citadel from a lover's diary by gilbert parker Read for LibriVox.org by Elizabeth Parsons. The Citadel A night wind swept and bound about with glee Of Erebus, all light and cheer within. White restless hands that falter Then begin to weave a music voice fantasy. And life and death and love And weariness and unrequital Thrid the maze of sound. And one voice saith, Behold, the lost is found, and saith not any more for joyfulness. Out of the night there comes a wanderer who waits upon the threshold and is still, 
and listens and bows down his head until his grief-drawn breath startles the heart of her. The victor vanquished, at her feet he fell, a prisoner in his conquered citadel. And a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Forty one Malfeasance from a Lover's Diary by Gilbert Parker. Read for LibriVox.org by Elizabeth Parsons. Malfeasance Two of One Name They standing where the sun makes shadows in the orchard bloom of spring. She holding in her palm a jeweled ring, he speaking on what evil it had done. Raise thy pale face and wondrous eyes to mine. Let not thy poor lips quiver in such pain. Too young and blindly thou hast drunk the wine, crushed from the lees of love. Be strong again. Trail back thy golden hair from thy broad brow, and raise thy lily neck like some tall tower that wrecks not any strife nor any hour. So it but holds its height, heeding not how. The noblest find their way o'er paths of ire to the clear summit of God's full desire. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Forty two Annunciation from a Lover's Diary by Gilbert Parker. Read for LibriVox.org by Elizabeth Parsons. Annunciation I think in that far time when Gabriel came and gave short speech to Mary, sweet and wise, that when the faint fear faded from her eyes and they were filled up with a sudden flame of joy bewildering and wonderment, with reverence the angel in her palm laid one white lily dewy with the balm of the Lord's garden, saying, This is sent for thine espousal, thou the undefiled, and it shall bloom till all be consummate. Lo, then he passed. She, musing where she sate, felt all her being moved in manner wondrous mild. Then, laying against her bosom the white flower, she bowed her head and said, It is God's dower. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. 43. Vanished Dreams from a Lover's Diary by Gilbert Parker. Read for LibriVox.org by Elizabeth Parsons. Vanished Dreams. Dreams, only dreams, they sprang from loneliness of outer life, from innermost desire to reach the soul that now in golden fire of cherished song I pray for and caress. I wandered through the world with longing gaze to find her who was my hope's parallel, that to her I might all my gospel tell of changeless love and bid her make a praise. I knew that some day I should look within the ever-deepening distance of her eyes, for in my dreams from veiled seraphim came one as if in answer to my cries, and passing near me, pointed down the road that led me at the last to thy abode. And a poem. This recording is in the public domain. 44. Into Thy Land From a Lover's Diary by Gilbert Parker Read for LibriVox.org by Elizabeth Parsons into thy land. Into thy land of sunlight I have come, and live within thy presence, as a ray of light 
lives in the brightness of the day, and find in thee my heaven and my home. Yet what am I that thou shouldst ope the gate of thy most sweet completeness, and should spend rich values of thy life on me thy friend, for which I have no worthy duplicate? Nay, lady, I know riches have to give. I have no name of honor or the pride of place to privilege me to sit beside thee in thy kingdom, where thy graces live. Wilt thou not one day whisper, you have climbed beyond your merits, pray you fall behind? Egyptian Proverb Wish thy friend joy of his journey, but pray in secret that he have no joy, for then may he return quickly to thee. And a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Forty five. Divided. From A Lover's Diary by Gilbert Parker. Read for LibriVox.org by Elizabeth Parsons. Divided. Divided by no act of thine or mine, forever parted by a fateful deed, a fateful feud. Alas, when fathers bleed, the children shall fulfill the wild design. A Montague hath killed a Capulet, a Capulet hath slain a Montague. Twin graves, twin sorrows, and oh, mad to do, a vengeance, O oh, dread, in tale of regret. There lie they in their dark, self-chosen graves, and from them cries hate's everlasting ghost. Blood hath been shed, and love and ye are slaves. Time wrecks, and freedom drifts upon life's coast. Yet not for us the relish of that doom, which found a throne upon Juliet's tomb. And a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Forty six. We must live on. From a Lover's Diary by Gilbert Parker. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. We must live on. We must live on. A deeper tragedy to see, to touch, to know, and to desire, to feel in every vein the glorious fire of Eden, and to cry, Oh, to be free! To cry, Oh, wipe the gloomy stain away, thou who first raised the sword, who gave the hilt into the hand of man, this blood they spilt, our fathers, oh, blot out the bitter day. Erase the hour from out thy calendar, turn back the hands upon the clock of time, O artificer of destroying war. Their righteous hate who bore us in our crime, upon the children, tis the cold reply of him who makes to those who must not die. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Forty seven. Yet life is sweet from a lover's diary by Gilbert Parker. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Yet life is sweet. Yet life is sweet. Thy soul hath breathed along. Thine eyes have cast their glory on the earth. Thy foot hath touched it. And thine hour of birth didst give a new pulse to the veins of song. Better to stand amid the toppling towers of every valiant hope a Samson's dream, than the deep indolence of Leth's stream, the loneliness of slow submerging hours. Better, O oh better, thus to see the wreck, and to have rocked to motion of the spheres. Better, O oh better, to have trod the deck of hope, and sailed the unmanageable years. I better to have paid the price, and known, than never felt this tyrannous alone. 
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Forty eight Lost Footsteps from a Lover's Diary by Gilbert Parker. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Lost Footsteps. Upon the disk of love's bright planet fell a darkness yester eve, and from your lips I heard cold words. Then came a swift eclipse of joy at meeting on hopes, it is well. And if I spoke with sadness and with fear, if from your gentle coldness I drew back, and felt that I had lost the flowery track that led to peace in love's sweet atmosphere, it was because a woeful dread possessed my aching heart, the dread some evil star had crossed the warm affection in your breast had bade me stand apart from where you are the world seemed breaking on my life i heard the crash of sorrows in that chiding word end of poem this recording is in the public domain forty nine the closed door from a lover's diary by gilbert parker read for librivox dot org by larry wilson the closed door it is not so and so for evermore that thou and i must live our lives apart i with a patient smother at my heart and thy hand resting on a closed door what couldst thou ever ask me that i should not bend me to achieve thy high behest what cannot men achieve with lance in rest who carry noble valour in their blood and some nobility of high emprise, lady, couldst thou make possible in me, if living neath the pureness of thy eyes, I found the key to inner majesty, and reaching outward, heart strong from thy hand, set here and there a beacon in the land. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Fifty, the chalice from a lover's diary by Gilbert Parker, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. The chalice, not by my power alone, but thou and I together thinking, working, loving on achievement awards as all brave souls have gone, perchance should find new star drifts in the sky that curves above humanity, and set some new interpretation on life's page should serve the strivings of a widening age and fashion wisdom from the social fret deep did time's lances go thou pluckest them forth and on my sullen woundings laid the balm of thy life's sweetness o oh, let my love be worth the keeping my head beneath thy palm once more i lift love's chalice to thine eyes not till thou blessest me will i arise End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Fifty one. Mio Destino. From a Lover's Diary by Gilbert Parker. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Mio Destino. Here, making count at every step, I see something in her, like to a hidden thought within my life that long time i had sought but never found till her soul spoke to me and if she said a thousand times i did not call thee thou camest seeking not my voice was it thou heardest thy love was not my choice i should straightway reply that of thee hid even from thyself lest it should startle thee hath called me made me slave and king and one and when the mists of time shall rise and we stand forth it shall be said since time begun ye two were called as one from that high hill where the creating master hath his will in the poem this recording is in the public domain fifty two i have beheld from a Lover's Diary by Gilbert Parker, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. I have beheld. 
I have beheld a multitude stand still in such deep silence that a sudden pain struck through the heart in sharing the tense strain, and all the world seemed bounded by one will. But when precipitated on the sea of human feeling was the incident that caught their wonder, when the skies were rent with quivering sound, with passion's liberty, so I have stood before this parting day, with chilly fingers pressed upon my breast, that my heart burst not flesh and bands away. And my sharp cry break through my lady's rest, I have shut burning eyelids on the sight of this dread time that scorches my sad night. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Fifty three. Too soon away. From a lover's diary by Gilbert Parker. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Too soon away. Have I then found thee but to lose thee, friend? But touch thee ere thou vanish from my gaze. And when my soul is struggling from the maze of many conflicts, must our converse end? Across the empty space that now shall spread between us, shall I never go to thee? Or thou, beloved, never come to me save but to whisper prayers above the dead? Ah, cruel thought! Shall not hope's convoy bear to thee the reinforcements of my love? Shall I not on thy white hand drop a tear of crowned joy, one day where thou dost move in thy place regally, even as now I place my farewell token on thy brow? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Fifty four. The Treasure. From a Lover's Diary by Gilbert Parker. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. The Treasure. And now, when from the shore goes out the ship, wherein set the treasure that I hold closer than miser all his hidden gold, dearer than wine Zeus carried to his lip. My aching heart cries from its pent-up pain, O oh, love, O oh, love, O oh, more than life to me, how can I live without the surety of thy sweet presence till we meet again? So like a wounded deer I came to thee, the arrow of mischance piercing my side, and through thy sorrow-healing ministry I rose with strength, like giants in their pride. But now, but now, how shall I stand alone, knowing the light, the hope of me, is gone? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Fifty-five. Dahin. From a Lover's Diary by Gilbert Parker, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Dahin. O brow so fronted with a stately calm, O full completeness of true womanhood, O counsel, pleader for all highest good, Thou hast upon my sorrow poured thy balm. Poor soldier who did not raise his sword, and touching with his lips the hilt cross, swear in war or peace the livery to wear of one that blessed him with her queenly word. Most base crusader who at night and morn crying dahin thought not of her again, from whose sweet power was his knighthood born. For whom he quells the valiant Saracen, shall I not then in the tumultuous place of my life's warfare ever seek thy face? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Fifty six. Love's Usury. From a Lover's Diary. By Gilbert Parker. Read for LibriVox.org. By Larry Wilson. Love's Usury. Here count I over all the gentle deeds which thou hast done. Here summon I thy words, sweeter to me than sweetest song of birds, that came like grace immortal to my needs. Love's usury has reckoned such a sum of my indebtedness, 
that I can make no lien large enough to overtake its value, and before it I am dumb. Yet, O oh my gracious, most kind creditor, I would not owe to thee one item less. We cannot give the sun requital for its liberal light. Our office is to bless, if blessings could be compassed by my prayer. High heaven should set star gems in thy hair. In the poem, this recording is in the public domain. Fifty seven. The Decree. From a Lover's Diary by Gilbert Parker. Read for LibriVox.org by William Jones. Last night I saw the warm white southern moon sail upward through a smoky amber sea. Orion stood in silver majesty where the gold girdled sun takes rest at noon. I slept, I dreamed. Against a sunset sky I saw thee stand, all garmented in white, with hand stretched to me, and there in my sight I went to meet thee, but I heard thee cry, We stand apart as sun from shining sun. Thou hast thy place, there rolleth far and near a sea between. Until life's all done, thou canst not come, nor I go to thee, dear. Methought I bowed my head to thy decree, and donned the mantle of my misery. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Fifty-eight. Tis morning now. From a Lover's Diary by Gilbert Parker. Read for LibriVox.org by William Jones. Tis morning now and dreams and fears are gone, and sleep has calmed the fever in my veins, and I am strong to drink the cup that drains the last drop through my lips, and make no moan. Strength I have borrowed from the outward show of spiritual puissance thou doth wear. Shall I not thy high domination share, or the shock of feeling? Shall I grow more fearful than the soldier, when between the smoke of hostile cannon lies his way? To carry far the colors of his queen, while her bright eyes behold him in the fray? Here do I smile between the warring hosts of sad farewells, and reek not what it costs. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Fifty nine. Sacrifice. From a Lover's Diary by Gilbert Parker. Read for LibriVox.org by William Jones. And, O oh, most noble, and yet once again most noble spirit, if I ever did aught that thy goodness frowns on, be it hid for ever and deep buried. Let the rain of coming springs fall on the quiet grave. Perchance some violets will grow to tell that I, when uttering this last farewell, built up a sacrificial architrave that I, who worship thee, have love so great, to live in the horizon thou mayst set, to stand but in the shadow of the gate, faithful when coward promptings cry, forget. Ah, lady, when I gave my heart to thee, it passed into thy lifelong regency. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Sixty, Shine On, from A Lover's Diary by Gilbert Parker, read for LibriVox.org by William Jones. Shine on, O sun, sing on, O birds of song, and in her light my heart fashions a tune, not wholly sad, most like a tender rune sung by some knight in days gone over long, when he, with minstrel eyes in the Syrian grove, looked out toward his England and then drew from a sweet instrument a sound that grew from twilight into morning of his love. Go then, beloved, bearing as you go these songs that have more sunlight far than cloud, more summer flowers than dead leaves neath the snow, that tell of hopes from which you raised the shroud. My lady, bright benignant star, shine on. 
Egyptian proverb. I lift to thee my low Trisagion. He that hath pleasant dreams is more fortunate than one who hath a cup-bearer. End of Egyptian proverb and poem. This recording is in the public domain. Sixty one. So thou art gone. From a lover's diary by Gilbert Parker. Read for LibriVox.org by Phil Chenever. So thou art gone. So thou art gone, and I am left to wear thy memory as a golden amulet upon my breast, to sing a chassinet of winter tones when summertime is here. And yet my heart arises from the dark, where it fell back in silence when you went to seaward, and a sprite malevolent sat laughing in the white sails of thy bark. Twas not moth wings dashing against the flame, burning in love's arenum, Twas a cry struck from soul-crossing chords that separate, frame life's holy calm or wasting agony. But now, between the warring strings, there grows a space of peace, as tween truce honored foes. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Sixty two The Thousand Things From a Lover's Diary by Gilbert Parker, read for LibriVox dot org by Larry Wilson. Here one by one come back the thousand things which made divinely sweet our intercourse. Love summons them here straightway to divorce the heart from melancholy wanderings. Here laid she her white hand upon my arm. To this place came she with slow gliding grace. Here smiled she up serenely in my face, And these sweet notes she sang me for a charm. I treasure up her words and say them o'er, With close-shut eyes. With her again I float upon the lore, I see the gems she wore, The ruby shining at her queenly throat. I climb with her again the Pyrenees, And hear her laughter ringing through the trees. End of Poem this recording is in the public domain. Sixty three The Sea from a Lover's Diary by Gilbert Parker. Read for LibriVox dot org by Kathleen. The Sea. I in my childhood never saw the sea, save in my dreams. There it was vast and lone, splendid in power, breaking against the stone walls of the world in thunder symphony. From it arose, mists growing into mists, making a cool white curtain for the sun, and melting mornward when the day was done, a moving sphere where spirits kept their trysts, a ceaseless swinging with the swinging earth, a never-tiring ebbing to and fro, trenching eternal vastnesses, a girth, round mountains in their everlasting snow. It was a vast emotion, fibre drawn from all the elements since the first dawn end of poem this recording is in the public domain sixty four the chart from a lover's diary by gilbert parker read for librivox dot org by kathleen the chart then came in further years the virgin sight of the live sea the sea that marches down with sunny phalanxes and flags of foam to match its puissance with earth's awful might far off the purple mist drew into mist as thought melts into endless thought and round the rim of the sheer world was heard a sound floating through palpitating amethyst and through the varying waste of elements there passed a sail which caught the opposing wind triumphant as an army in its tents beholds the foe it conquering left behind and life i said life is but the sea and what shall guide us to our destiny end of poem this recording is in the public domain sixty five revealing from a lover's diary by gilbert parker 
read for LibriVox.org by kathleen revealing the prescience of dreams struck walls away from mortal fact and mortal fact revealed with myriad voices potencies concealed in the dim birthplace of a coming day even as a blind man's fingers wander o'er his harp-strings led by sound to dreams of sound till in his soul an eloquence profound rises above the petulance and roar of the great globe as in a rush of song from feathered throats one in a mighty wood mid sweet interpositions moves along the avenues of some predestined good so i dream nurtured standing by the sea made levy on the wonders that should be end of poem this recording is in the public domain sixty six overcoming from a lover's diary by gilbert parker read for librivox dot org by kathleen overcoming and god is good i said and art is good and labor hath its rich reward of sleep and recompense will come for all who keep dishonor's ill contagion from the blood and over us there curves the infinite blue heaven as a shield and at the end we shall find one who loveth to befriend in those who faint for shame within his sight and down the awful passes of the sky there comes the voice that circumvents the gale that makes the avalanche to pass us by and saith i overcome to man's i fail and peradventure now said i the zest of all existence waits on his behest end of poem this recording is in the public domain sixty seven whither now from a lover's diary by gilbert parker read for librivox dot org by kathleen whither now but man's deliverances intervene between the soul's swift speech and god's high will that saith to tempests of the thought be still and in life's lazaretto maketh clean the leprous sense ah who can find his way among the many altars who can call out perfect peace from any ritual or shelter find in systems of a day as one sees on some ancient urn up thrown from out a tomb records that none may read with like interpretation and the stone retains its craven fealty to the dead so on the great palimpsest men have writ such lines or cross that none interprets it end of poem this recording is in the public domain sixty eight ararat from a lover's diary by gilbert parker read for librivox dot org by larry wilson what marvel that the soul of youth should cry man builds his temples tween me and the face of him whom i would seek i cannot trace his purpose in their shadow nor descry the wisdom absolute what marvel that with yearning impotent i impotent beyond all measure his full faith was spent, and for his soul there rose no Ararat. Yet out upon the sun-drawn, sensate sea of elemental pain there came a word as if from him who travelled Galilee. As fair as any Zion ever heard, the voice of love spoke, love that writes its name on life and death, and then my lady came. End a Poem this recording is in the public domain. 69. As Light Leaps Up From A Lover's Diary by Gilbert Parker Read for LibriVox.org by Michelle Fry, Baton Rouge, Louisiana As Light Leaps Up As light leaps up from star to star, so mounts faith from one soul unto another, so the lower to the higher, till the flow of knowledge rises from creation's founts. 
until from human love we come to know the august presence of the love divine and feel the light unutterable shine upon half-lights that we were wont to show absorbing them tis love that beckons us from low desires from restlessness and sin to heights that else we had not reached and thus we find the heaven we dared not hope to win how clearer seem designs immortal when our lives are fed on love's fine regimen end of poem this recording is in the public domain seventy the darkened way from a lover's diary by gilbert parker read for librivox dot org by william jones the darkened way it is no matter thus the noble dane about his heart more ill than one could tell sad augury that like a funeral bell against his soul struck solemn notes of pain so gainst the deadly smother he could press with calm his lofty manhood interpose purpose divine and at the last disclose for life's great shift a regnant radiance Today I bought some matches in the street from one whose eyes had long since lost their sight. Trembling with palsy was he to his feet. Father, I said, how fare you in the night? In body ill, but tis no matter, friend. Strong is my soul to keep me to the end. Egyptian Proverb 1 Distrust not a woman, nor a king, it availeth nothing. Egyptian Proverb 2 When thou journeyest into the shadows, take not sweetmeats with thee, but a seed of corn, and a bottle of tears, and wine, that thou mayst have a garden in the land whither thou goest. End of Proverbs End of Poem this recording is in the public domain. Seventy one. Reunited. From a Lover's Diary by Gilbert Parker. Read for LibriVox.org by Michelle Fry, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Reunited. Once more, once more, that golden eventide golden within without all cold and gray slowly you come forth from the troubled day singing my heart you glided to my side you glided in the same grave quiet face the same deep look the never-ending light in your proud eyes eyes shining through the night that night of absence distance from your place calm words slow touch of hand but oh the cry the long long cry of passion and of joy within my heart the starburst in the sky the world our world which time may not destroy your world and mine unutterably sweet dearest once more the old song at thy feet end of poem this recording is in the public domain. 72. Song Was Gone From Me From A Lover's Diary by Gilbert Parker Read for LibriVox.org by Michelle Fry, Baton Rouge, Louisiana Song Was Gone From Me dearest once more this i could tell and tell till life turned drowsy with the ceaseless note dearest once more the words throb in my throat my heart beats to them like a muffled bell change time and change oh change and time you come not knocking at my door knowing me gone here have i dwelt within my heart alone watching and waiting while my muse was dumb song was gone from me sweet i could not sing 
save as men sing upon the lonely hills under my hand the old chord ceased to ring hushed by the grinding of the high god's mills dearest once more those mad mills had their way now is mine hour to every man his day end of poem this recording is in the public domain seventy three good was the fight from a lover's diary by gilbert parker read for librivox dot org by michelle fry baton rouge louisiana good was the fight how have i toiled how have i set my face fair to the swords no man could say i quailed ne'er did i falter i dare not to have failed i dare not to have dropped from out the race good was the fight good till a piteous dream crept from some direful covert of despair showed me your look that look so true and fair distant and bleak for me no more a gleam then was i driven back upon my soul then came dark moments lady then i drew forth from its place the round unfathomed bowl of sorrow and from it i quaffed to you speaking as men speak who have lost their heart's last prize and dare not count the cost end of poem this recording is in the public domain seventy four unchanged from a lover's diary by gilbert parker read for librivox dot org by michelle fry baton rouge louisiana unchanged but you are here unchanged you say not so in words but when you placed your hands in mine but when i saw the same old glory shine within your eyes i read it and i know and when those hands ran up along my arm and rested on my shoulder for a space a sacred inquisition in your face to read my heart how could i doubt that charm that truth ineffable i set my soul in hazard to a farthing that you kept the faith with pride unspeakable the whole course of those years in which communion slept your soul flamed in your look you read i knew how little worth was i how heavenly you end of poem this recording is in the public domain seventy five absolvo te from a lover's diary by gilbert parker read for librivox dot org by michelle fry baton rouge louisiana absolvo te i read your truth you read what did you read did you read all and reading all forgive how i o oh little dwarf of conscience sieve my soul bear all before her bear indeed and looking on the remnant and the waste can you absolve me me the doubter one who challenged what god spent his genius on his genius and his pride so fair so chaste i am ashamed and when i told my dreams shaken and humble dear there was no cause your words proud sorrowful as it beseems such as thou art there never was a cause why you should honour me ashamed am i and you forgive me bless me for reply end of poem this recording is in the public domain seventy six benedictus from a lover's diary by gilbert parker read for librivox dot org by michelle fry baton rouge louisiana benedictus you bless me then you turn away your head never again dear i have blessed you so my lips upon your lips between must flow the river oh the river thus you said the river oh the river and the sun stream that we may not cross sun that is joy flow as thou must 
shine on in full employ shine through her eyes though let the river run o oh, lady to your liege men speak you say dream no more dreams yourself be as am i your hands clasped to your face so shutting out the day an instant then to me your low good-bye good-night good-bye and then the social rain the lights the songs the flowers and the pain end of poem this recording is in the public domain seventy seven the message from a lover's diary by gilbert parker read for librivox dot org by michelle fry baton rouge louisiana the message oh hush you said oh hush the twilight hung between us and the world but in your face flooding with warm inner light the sovereign grace of one who rests the brooding trees among of one who steps down from a lofty throne seeking that peace the sceptre cannot call and leaving courtier page and seneschal goes down the lane of sycamores alone and going listens to the notes that swell from golden throats stories of ardent days and lovers in fair veils and homing bell and the sweet theme unbearable she prays the songbirds cease so on the tale i dare your hush your wistful hush broke like prayer end of poem this recording is in the public domain seventy eight unavailing from a lover's diary by gilbert parker read for librivox dot org by michelle fry baton rouge louisiana unavailing never you said never this side the grave and what shall come hereafter who may know whether we eden shall guess the way we go passing beneath death's mystic architrave silence or song dumb sleep or cheerful hours o oh, lady you have questioned answer too you you to die silence and gloom for you dead song dead lights dead graces and dead flowers it is not so the foolish trivial end the inconsequent paltry nothing gone gone all the genius of the ageless something spend itself within this little earthly wall the commonplace conception that we reap reward of drudge and ploughman idle sleep end of poem this recording is in the public domain seventy nine you shall live on from a lover's diary by gilbert parker read for librivox dot org by michelle fry baton rouge louisiana you shall live on you shall live on triumphant you shall take your place among the peerless fearless ones and those who loved you here shall tell their sons to honor every woman for your sake and those your peers shall say others are pure others are noble others too have vowed and for a vow have suffered but she bows her own soul and another's to endure she smote the being more to her than all her own soul and the world a truth to hold faith with the dead and hung a heavy pall between her and love and life the world is old it hath sent here none queenlier of the few the royal few is she martyred and true end of poem this recording is in the public domain eighty vex not this ghost from a lover's diary by gilbert parker read for librivox dot org by michelle fry baton rouge louisiana vex not this ghost upon the rack of this tough world i hear as when cordelia's glories all dissever never 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 that wild moan of the dispossessed leer 
o world vex not this ghost yea let it pass the spirit of these songs the fool hath mocked the fool our woe upon us hath unlocked from where the soul holds to our lips the glass to see what breath of life o fool poor fool well we have laughed together you and i o fond insulter in the healing pool of your deep poignant raillery i lie let us be grand again my fool the throne is gone but see the coronation stone end of poem this recording is in the public domain eighty one the memory from a lover's diary by gilbert parker read for librivox dot org by michelle fry baton rouge louisiana the memory know you where i my royal fool was crowned a rock within the great aegean where a strong flood hurrieth on finisterre where at the pole our valiant men were drowned where the soft creamy wash of indian seas spreads palmward where the sunset glides to dawn no night between where all the tides are drawn to greet their sun and bathe their idols knees where was i crowned dear fool upon a stone that standeth where the earth's arches make but one where all the banners of her soul were flown and trumpeted the legions of the sun the stone is left tis here against the door of throne and kingdom pray you mock no more end of poem this recording is in the public domain eighty two the passing from a lover's diary by gilbert parker read for librivox dot org by michelle fry baton rouge louisiana the passing a time will come when we again shall rail not yet not yet the flood comes on apace that deep dividing river and her face grows dimmer as it widens pale so pale have we not railed and laughed these many days murmurs before the lights dear fool your hand upon your lips oh let us once be grand grand as we were when treading royal ways lo there she moves beyond the river gone gone is the sun lo starlight in her eyes see how she standeth silent and alone oh hush let us not vex her with our cries proud as of old unto my throne i go cordelia's gone hush draw the curtain so end of poem this recording is in the public domain eighty three envoy from a lover's diary by gilbert parker read for librivox dot org by michelle fry baton rouge louisiana envoy when you and i have played the little hour have seen the tall subaltern life to death yield up his sword and smiling draw the breath the first long breath of freedom when the flower of recompense has fluttered to our feet as to an actor's and the curtain down we turn to face each other all alone alone we two who never yet did meet alone and absolute and free oh then oh then most dear how shall be told the tale clasped hands pressed lips and so clasped hands again no words but as the proud wind fills the sail my love to yours shall reach then one deep moan of joy and then our infinite alone end of poem this recording is in the public domain this ends a lover's diary by gilbert parker 
read for you by librivox volunteers in the latter part of two thousand seventeen